So today, uh, I figure I would talk about uh, creating dynamic figures, right? So some of you guys are aspiring artists, I take it, right? Yeah. So um, how do you do this? And uh, you have the pencil. Oh, here it is. Okay, so, so the whole trick to creating dynamic figures is to move the torso as far away from the pelvis as possible without making the uh, figures look like they're breaking, right? So uh, if someone's standing, um, Torso and that's a pelvis. Yeah. There you have it. There you go. And so they're right on top of one another. The figure is static. It's just standing like you were, you were uh, I am sitting. But as they start moving apart, that's when characters start falling off balance. Okay, so the torso has two slots for the arm. Actually, if you take your toys apart, you'll see the same thing. So there's a head slot, an arm slot, another arm slot over there. And then your uh, rib cage, right? So you can just do it like that, okay? So that you have this kind of shape, which is the torso. The pelvis, uh, well, it's more like uh, the shape of a V, I guess. You got your holes there for your legs, your, and your hip bone right here, right? So, right? So all you do is, uh, if you're drawing, you just connect the, the uh, torso to the pelvis, and drop a belly button in there. Drop that in there. Boom. You got half the figure done. How easy was that? That was simple, Tim. Yes. <laughs> and then out of here, you just, you know, you just show us more. Well, you put your arms in the air, right? Just like that. Super easy. Okay. I can obviously do that the same way you are. And then uh, the legs are like the elongated footballs. So you guys all have seen footballs, right? So just draw the elongated football. Just grab your mouth and show Yeah. And uh, yeah. Then you put like a little softball there for the knees. This is the wrong reference. We like, what is a softball? It's a sport played with it. It's like baseball. It's like other so, And then uh, uh, it's a funny looking hand shaped thing that's a calf. And uh, so you drop, just drop that down, right? Then you have your cylinder and then you have your head. And if it, you want to make it look grim, you just bring the chin down like this because everyone knows that's the universal side. I'm a badass, right? So, boom. Look, badass for you, right? So if you're doing the, the, the hands, Think of the hands like uh, like a, the Pentagon, right? The uh, military building on the East Coast, right? Where all the defense That's are. Washington, D.C. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, <laughs> See the power. draw a little Pentagon there. A little Pentagon, right? And then out of the Pentagon is one of the little fingers, like little Frankfurters. <laughs> right? Wait, what? Really? Right. So it's hot dogs and Pentagons? And then to get people excited at Comic-Con, you just, you just put little horns on them, okay? And you got that, right? So, okay, so that's your static figure, right? Very simple. All right, now I'm gonna make it more dynamic. And so how do we do that? Okay, we take the pelvis, right here in the center of uh, mass. Mass is uh, the content, I guess. And the center of the pelvis is here, and they're lined up one on top of each other, right? So as we stretch and move those apart, It starts for forcing the, uh, the figure into kind of di different dynamic poses. So again, we'll draw the uh, torso. Now, the torso is fairly rigid, so no matter what pose you have, you're always going to draw this kind of uh, funny shape there. And that could be your guide. And I'll, draw, I'll even draw through so you can see the other hole, right? Right, and then we'll put the pelvis here. So now we do this, you know, the torso has to uh, connect to the pelvis. The belly button right there. And then we've got half the figure done, right? So uh, as the, uh, um, as this character, let's say, is um, flying, no, let's say he's punching, right? So we'll take that arm and kind of cross it across the body there. He can do both at the same time. Right. Fly and punch. And you want to do the, what's it called? Contra pasta? Contra not pasta. Yeah, contra pasta. <laughs> Con, contra posto? Contra. Yeah. I don't know. It's something I learned in art school. But it's it a was fancy the, the, word. The Latin, it's, we can't it's share contra, contra, it's contra posto. Yeah. Yeah, is it? Con, yeah, I think so. All right. And uh, it just means like when you're running, this arm goes out and your left leg goes forward. You don't want to be running like this. Exactly. Right? Yeah, okay, so 
Uh, so if this arm is going forward, that means the other, the right thigh has to be going forward like that. Okay, and so then this arm would go back, or this one, this thigh would go back. We'll bend this leg here, all right. And, and now since that arm is in perspective, it's kind of hidden, uh, we just kind of show it kind of behind. All important, tilt of the, the chin down. Oh, okay. That's right, so now. So by uh, putting some air underneath the cape, it makes it look like he's moving, right? So the center of mass is here for the torso, the center of mass for the pelvis is down here. You can see that, right? They're, they're starting to move apart. So if you actually like pull out art like Jack Kirby and do this diagram on top of his art, he really pulls the, uh, like he would draw Captain America punching and a Superman and uh, Dark Side. Dark Side, sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 right. Scratch <laughs> that. Awesome. Edit that Captain America back on top. So, the torso will be way over here, the pelvis will be way over here. So um, when I draw, I really try to think about where those two dots are in relationship to one another, and the fact that they always have to be connected. So even this though, it's, it's, got, it's kind of dynamic, but it's still lacking something. And, uh, and that's because it's all happening in one plane, right? By that I mean, if I were to create a plane like this, right? That's more like a building than a plane. It is a plane, trust me. <laughs> right, so this guy is living in this space, right? Inside this kind of narrowly defined box. The trick to drawing, convincingly, I think, is to uh, convert the 2D drawings into the illusion of something that's 3D. And the way you do that is by breaking the plane, right? The three planes, you guys all knew this in map, right? Anyone? No. Who's got it? X, Y, Z. Raise your hand. Who's got an X, Y, Z? X, Y, Z, that's right. So you have the X axis, you have the Y axis, and the Z axis goes back into space, right? I think so, right? So, yeah, so this is the important <laughs> axis, the Z axis. So on something like this, I would say, I can kind of imagine this in my head now as a vector kind of drawing. And it's very uh, one-dimensional. He's always like this. And what I would want to do is start bending things like this and this. That way I'm in the X, Y, and Z axis, right? Yes. So when you do that, and so when you start doing that, that's when things start getting really kind of dynamic. So, for example, if you're doing a hand, okay, here's a hand. It looks like a, kind of a VW butt. And, uh, Are you saying ham? No, hand, hand, hand. Oh. Right, so you can do a hand that looks like this. But that's kind of boring, right? So the trick is you can start breaking this up and you can start doing things where... Or something like that, this ball reference. But uh, so you want to like start breaking things up. And so when you have Batman sort of punching, you can do something where not only is he punching straight like this, but he's actually punching a little with the uh, bell, bent elbow. Yes. Exactly. And you do that by foreshortening. And by foreshortening, I just mean you just make it look shorter and it creates the optical illusion that it's going back into space. Would be the Z axis, right? That would be the Z axis, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're learning. See? Uh, I'm getting smarter. All right. <laughs> All right. Wow. I should pay attention to math. I know. I know. And then uh, the other arm, we're going to go with. For every uh, action, there's a reaction, right? You guys all study that in physics. Yeah. <laughs> Equal or opposite reaction? Every, no, uh, every action has a Equal closing Equal and opposite reaction. reaction. Oh, right there. So if you're going to throw a lot of force this way, something has to go back this way to compensate. So that would be the other arm. Right? It's the first law of thermodynamics. It is the first law of thermodynamics. Yeah. I, I didn't want to show yeah. off. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> That. Anyone know Avogadro's yeah, number? Anyone? Anyone? All right. So, uh, so <laughs> this arm is back here like that, and now again I am gonna pop it back so it's right.
right? So this thing is going back into that z-axis there, right? And the same thing with this joint. It's going into the it's going into the, the paper, right? And then since this arm is forward, this leg is forward, this leg is back. And then you want to have them punch somebody. So let's say you have a head over here. So this arm is falling. Okay. So if you just apply these things, you can get a lot more sort of dynamic force out of your figures. And you're always thinking about when I draw these things, I, I, I can visualize them in three dimensions and I can actually move the uh, camera around. And so that allows you to do, um, you know, like shots where uh, someone's running. Okay, so it's...
blacks are important. Spotting blacks on the figure are super important because they start creating, uh, they help you with the illusion of foreshortening things. So if you look at this uh, forearm, first of all, putting that line there immediately starts creating perspective, right? So now we know that it's kind of going into space. And then to make it even more, by going like this, okay, it's the same principle as having a cube, having a light source, right? Same thing. That's how we determine that's a different plane. The great thing about capes is that it covers up a lot of anatomy, so there's a lot of saving time. I'm convinced this is why characters had capes in the last. All the, all the books shipped on time, all the characters had capes. Characters stop having capes, books start shipping late. I think there is not a You're on to something. I, I, I think you've uncovered the mystery. Yes, anyway, so. Um, Next to the next spot that you see every character, yeah, Aquaman's yeah. got a cape. Capes, cape on yeah, the, the newest 52. <laughs> I don't know if that looks good. Looks a little jacked. Anyway, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why I always lie. So then this other guy, that's going to be the Joker, and um, we're just going to show a little action here. Same sort of thing, he's got his arm, then it's going to be bent at the elbow. And then, up, and then on top of that, I'm going to bend the, the, the wrist up here. Now obviously if I were casting this for real, I would refine it and keep refining it. And usually that means I race and just add more nuance. I'm just working very quickly and just using sort of stabs and lines just to kind of illustrate the principle. So even that hand that's bent here at the wrist, I'm going to have the fingers, they're not going to be like this, they're not going to be like that, but they're going to be like as jacked up as possible, right? So. Yeah. Right, so those are the little things that you keep, keep introducing here and there, and things just look more dynamic, I guess. Um, you bring that in here, and then... He's got his own version of the cape, where he's got the, what are they called? Um, Tails. Yes. Yes, that's it. As he points out. That's right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And why do you think they, they incorporated that? Less drawing of the legs. <laughs> yes. yes. Cheaters. You know, as a side, I, I did some very quick things with the, uh, the clothes. A lot of people ask me, like, how do you draw clothes? It's pretty simple. If you have uh, windows at home, you can draw clothes, right? If you have a window, look at the window. In front of the window is a thing called a drape. A drape. I have blinds. You have blinds. <laughs> you're in your house. Uh, goes, so now I can't wait, draw clothes. Goes, it goes like this, yeah, it goes like this. And then you have your clothes, right? There's the window. Right? So what do, you, what do you see when you look at this? Well, the folds go like this, right? And that is because the, the, the clothes or the material, it all hangs from the highest point. So all you have to do is figure out where the tension comes from and draw your fold line from that. So when you are looking at the shoulder, the thing that's getting bent is just like an elaborate drape that's on his shoulder, right? This is the top part of the drape. This is, the, this is a, a drape. So these kind of lines just kind of just come out of that Every time there's like a crease, that's where those lines come out of. So it's just put your hand. And if you want to get super fancy, just put an S here. Right? Super fancy, right? There you go. Why? <laughs> Why? Huh? Why? Well, because uh, when the S is fancy? Well, no, because uh, when things get bunched up, right? Oh, okay. So, like if you're drawing pants, for example, right? They come down, but they will hit your shoe. And when they hit the shoe, they uh, fold up. So they come down like this, and boom, they hit. Ah, okay. Right, and then you put your, your shoe right there. Right? There, there's your fancy pants. Super fancy pants. Literally fancy pants. Yeah. All right. Am I going too fast? No. no. Okay, great. All right, so... Uh, faster. So now we've got this other arm, and uh, i got to figure out what to do with this wrist. So I'm going to hide most of it, I think, to, to put it in that Z point that we're all so loving, right? So that kind of 
shows it's kind of gnarled underneath, right? Because otherwise it would be out like that. And then we're going to put his, uh, his head and then his you know, We're going to leap with the jaw. We're going to really exaggerate this. It's not anatomically uh, correct. It's not anatomically uh, possible. So boys, don't try to hit your little, younger brothers and see if this is not possible. But really, um, you, want to, you want to really... Uh, this is where it starts getting cartoony. A lot of this stuff is kind of based in realism. But really, uh, the under roots of it all, to have like maximum amount of impact, you've got to add that cartoony uh, element back into it. Now, again, with this head that I'm going to draw in silhouette, rather than having it be exactly this plane, I'm going to take that melon and I'm going to rotate it so that we see more of the top part. Right? So that's the ear, that's the nose, right? That's the mouth. Right? And again, just so, again, we're just turning it a little bit to the Z axis. Then to 
continue selling it, they're all going to cast a shadow, right? So, that, we have bricks. Ah. Right, I have bricks. Uh, 
If you have an object like this, and there's rain running down, the rain is going to drip off these points, right? Wherever there's a, a crease, that's where the rain will, will, will come. So, talking about the, the cheekbone that juts out, the chin bone that kind of juts out, the nose. Okay. I'm going to go to Sharpie just so I can do a lot of this faster. This shadow here is an entire head on his body. Shadow of the Shadow of his uh, shoulder. Thank <laughs> you. 
Shower. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You can use your toothbrush too. <laughs> I mistakenly grabbed the wrong toothbrush. Uh, anyway. How much? Uh, so then, we're not done. It's the all important thing that makes it bad. Sign your name? Uh, no. <laughs> Price tag. No, it's. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. That's a bit. Hey, UPC box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, UPC box. That's right. Monday. No one has a birthday today? Nobody did. That one, we went, moved on my birthday. Right, I think anybody. Right, a birthday tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. that guy, that guy's got a birthday. Oh, birthday tomorrow. All right. Happy birthday to you. All right. Woo! Woo! All right, Christopher Matthew Williams, or Matthew Christopher Williams. Christopher Matthew. Is that chart? He's a male, by the way. Christopher. Oh, you know. Part of the 14th of the Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 